What's up guys, my name is Andy. This is part two of a two video series where I removed the C4 automatic transmission out of my 66 Mustang and now I'm going to be installing the T5 5 speed in here. I'm excited, this is something that I've been wanting to do since I bought the car and I can't wait. So let's go over the parts that we're going to install in this video. So naturally you're going to need a T5 transmission to get this going. I do want to point out that there are for the years that you want to focus on, the 83 to 93 T5 is really what you would prefer to have. Before 83, uh, there's a handful of years where they were non-world class, which had to do with a torque rating. And then at, at 94 to 04, they changed the input shaft length. Uh, the mount for the uh, rear cross member or subframe piece there was different. And then the speedometer setup was different. This one uses a gear. Whereas the other one, I believe it was like a Hall effect or something like that, where it was it was digital, and it was mounted right here, and uh, it just required you to buy additional components to make that work. Uh, I, on my previous Mustang, I purchased an 01 T5, and I went through the whole steps of figuring out that I had really not the ideal transmission, and I bought the parts that I needed, and I got it to work. I had to end up having to modify this uh, cross member bracket because I couldn't find one that was made to work with these cars with the newer transmissions. And in the end, the end, all I did was just move this over, you know, from instead of being flush with this edge, it was flush with that edge and it moved this whole thing back an inch, which allowed me to line up with that. And I didn't have to do any of the modifications. I've got a whole video on that if you want to check that out. But for this one, we don't need to worry about that. It'll bolt right up. Also, uh, the speedometer, we do need a new gear because the, uh, this one didn't come with the correct gear. So I had to get a new a new gear for that, but if I had the, the newer transmission, we'd be doing a whole different setup with that and that'd be a different discussion. And then also with this transmission, because it is the correct gear, this is, I think this is an 86, so it's in that 83 to 93 range. The input shaft length is good to go, everything's good there. However, this transmission, I, well I did get a really good deal on it off of, uh, off of a local guy here in town. The counter shaft, uh, which is not this shaft here, it's actually down here in the corner, was uh, shredded. It was missing five teeth, five and a half teeth, and it, I had to replace that whole thing. I didn't know that when I bought it, and as you grab this and you kind of spin this around, you can't easily tell what's going on in there. You gotta disassemble it. So I went ahead and took the transmission apart. I took it all the way down to the case, and I cleaned everything. I put new bearings in here, new seals, went through all that, and got it all built back up in addition to that new counter shaft, and uh, and now we're good to go. Uh, I also replaced the shifter assembly back here with a with a newer unit. Uh, I got it from LMR. Um, the nice thing about this is it's got these stops in here that one of the weak links of a T5 is if as you're shifting, as you're banging through the gears, if you push too far in, in, in any of you know when you're shifting, you can bust the 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 dog off of the shifter lever in here and essentially ruin it so you can't shift anymore. By having these bolts here in place that allows you to, when you shift, you hit the bolt and you don't overextend the shifting and bust anything inside, inside, inside the transmission. There are a lot of different companies that make units for this. Uh, this just, I just happened to get a good deal on this one, so I, I purchased it. Everything's good to go there. So, okay, so outside of the T5, what else do you need? If you were converting from an automatic like I was, you can use the existing drive shaft, which is fantastic. That'll save you some money because it's got the correct length, it's got the correct U joint on either end. It's got the right, uh, the right yoke that goes inside there. So everything's good to go there. You're good. Um, but because I did have an automatic, which means it had a flex plate uh, and not a flywheel, um, and then the bell housing is part of the transmission. So you have to buy those new components. You can buy them used. Uh, something like this you could probably buy used, save a couple bucks. But I just went ahead and bought a new one from Modern Drive Line. I really like them. I bought a lot of these parts from those guys. They've, they did me well on my last car when I had to do this, trans five, this T5 transmission. Did me well on this one as well. So I'm, I'm really happy with those guys. So new bell housing, new flywheel naturally because I, I had that flex plate. And then I have a, a, just a 10 inch clutch and, and, a, and a clutch just to go with that. Uh, so what else we need? Uh, we do need this shifter. So I'm doing a, a cable clutch. Now there are three options. You can do the mechanical Z-bar, uh, option, which um, for those <laughs> on a side note that were looking at my video where I put those JBA shorty headers on there, a couple of you guys asked if the Z bar mount will fit in there. I was on there recently and looking at it, and it looks like it looks like it'll fit. I don't have the Z bar, so I can't test fit it. But the the header collector 
is right above the mount point on the side of the block, so it might work. Um, so for those that were asking about that, there you go. But I didn't want to do the Z-Bar, I wanted to do a clutch uh, cable setup. I did this in my last car, but because of the header choice that I had, I ended up melting the cable to the point where I couldn't even actuate the clutch and I had to go to a hydraulic setup. You could do a, go to a hydraulic setup, I still not wild about that. Well, it did great and it was incredibly easy to push that clutch in. You almost couldn't tell what was going on. I do like this mechanical linkage, this, this engagement with the clutch. I, I like that it is, it is stiffer to push that in there, but I don't mind that. Um, I just like that connection. So I went, it, I went again, went with another one of those modern driveline kits to do the, the cable conversion. And we'll go over that here uh, a little bit later in the video and how you put all that together. So then because of the type of clutch, uh, actuation I have, you need a specific type of clutch lever. Uh, because I am pulling this, imagine this thing going this way, you need a specific type to go with that. If I had doing a kind where there was the, the Z-bar linkage, you actually push the lever, so you need a, you need a different actuation, so you need to pay attention uh, with, with whatever clutch setup you're going with, uh, you need to get the bar to go along with that. And then, okay, so from here, um, <laughs> I went with another one of those, the Hurst shifter that I had in my last car. I really like that shifter. And of course, just a white shifter ball, that kind of classic look. I'm really happy with that. Down here, we've got a new transmission mount. No big deal. There's the speedometer gear that we're going with for now. And I, I do plan to change the rear end on this. Um, this has 280 gears in the rear uh, and an open differential. I, I do want to, and I plan to put in a traction lock, which, you know, everybody knows Posi, but with Ford, it's called traction lock. And I got beat up for that. <laughs> In the comments last time, I kept calling it posi. Don't do that. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to change the gearing, and I'm going to put that traction lock in there. So I will do a different gear, but that's a different video down the road. Cross member mount. And then over here, we've got new flywheel bolts. Um, I, I bought these last time. Very happy with them. I, I would recommend buying new bolts for this. This is not something that you would want to cheap out and use the same bolts that you had before. While they would work, uh, the ones that were holding the flex plate on, just get some new bolts, it's a cheap insurance. Uh, and then some bolts for the clutch uh, pressure plate, bolts for the uh, shifter lever, and then just the Hertz shift boot. Again, you can go with any brand on that, but I just like the, the, the matching shift lever and shift boot. And then because the T5 uses automatic transmission fluid, Tremec recommends that, don't put gear oil in this transmission. You don't wanna do that. Okay, so from here, guys, that's it. That's all the parts that I have. And that's what it's gonna to take to finish this job. Uh, so let's, let's head over to the bench and look at this whole clutch setup and what we've got going on here and what we're gonna do with it. So this clutch cable conversion set is pretty deluxe. I like this thing. This comes with everything you're gonna to need to get this done. Even this part here acts as a template for drilling holes as well as being a mount for the cable. And what else we got here? We got, this here goes on the clutch pedal. And then we got some instructions. MDL does a really good job of giving you good, clear instructions on what to do, how to do it. Everything's in color. I really like that. So when you install this piece on the clutch pedal, I recommend taking this clevis off and threading it onto here as you feed this into the car when you're ready to do that. It's a lot easier to install this on the threads at that point. This is gonna bolt up on the clutch pedal with this, with these pieces here and it's gonna use an existing hole in the side of the clutch pedal. And we'll go over that when we get in there, uh, but you don't need to modify your clutch pedal at all to put this in the car. And here we've got, this boot goes over. If you guys have a hole, you should have the hole in the firewall uh, where the Z-bar uh, linkage would actually go through. This just plugs that hole if there isn't already a plug, and this is just to mount, to mount the cable next to the, the oil pan as you ride it underneath the motor. This here, this is the bracket. We're gonna mount this on the firewall. This goes behind the master cylinder. And then this is actually gonna fit right in through here. And we're gonna put take this O-ring off and slide this through here and then put the O-ring back on and that will secure this cable to, to this bracket. And then that's just a jam nut for the clevis. All right, and then we have the cable itself. This is going to plug in down at the end at the bell housing and the clutch lever. And this is what it looks like on the back of that. So this little detented area here, this will just fit inside here like so, and you got to jam that for adjusting that. And this gives you some adjustment for the clutch as well as you've got some fine adjustment up here if you needed to change anything. And then a heat shield just in case. Uh, heads up, if you've got some four to one headers or some tri y headers, you want to check the fitment of this setup with those headers. Um, I made the mistake 
of, uh, I put some new headers on my last car and I tried to do this right and this thing, this, this cable was right next to the headers and it just melted the cable. This thing, you need to be careful with that. I'm hoping and I should be okay with those new JBA shorties that I have on the car that everything's gonna clear just fine and we're not gonna have any issues. So let's go uh, show you where we're gonna put this in the car. First thing you're gonna wanna do is unmount the master cylinder from the firewall. Now I had just got done doing a video where I put in new roller bearings in the pedal assembly underneath the dash and also added that clutch pedal. So I had already taken this off, but there's only two bolts to hold it on. And also there's two more bolts that go up top here for that pedal assembly, you need to remove those as well before we can put this bracket in place. And when we put this bracket in here, you'll notice that it fits up snug right up against the, the lip of the firewall here. And you line it up with the bolt holes for the, ped the, for the pedal assembly. And then once that's in place, you can go ahead and put the bolts in if you want and line it up perfectly. But from here, I can get a pretty good eye on where everything is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark where this hole is. And now we wanna go ahead and drill that out. And we'll uh, start small and work our way up with the Unibit. Like I mentioned before, you're gonna to wanna to put that clevis on now. And then here you can see we've got that O-ring on behind the plate here. Also, you wanna thread this thing down to the very bottom so that it gives you the most amount of adjustment when you need it later. And if you have the export brace, don't forget you need to go underneath the brace for this part. All right, once you get it where you like it, then you can go ahead and bolt on the master cylinder back in place. All right, that's all bolted in now. And for this routing of the cable, what we're gonna do is just we're gonna route it down here and we'll just tuck it underneath the motor for now until we get the bell housing on, then we can finish routing this underneath the motor. So let's go inside the car and hook up the clutch pedal with bracket. Now we can go ahead and put this bracket on the side of the clutch pedal. And you do need to leave this in the car because this bracket's actually gonna cover the end of the, of the assembly up there. So if you have a removable one like I have, you have to make sure this is all in place before you put this bracket on. Also, we're gonna to wanna to hook up that clevis to the end of this bracket first, and then we'll bolt it to the side of the clutch pedal. And you can see here, this hole is what you're gonna use for bolting it up. If you had a, a manual transmission already, you were using this for probably that Z-bar location. Also, while, while I'm here, see this plug? I forgot to mention it when I was putting the bracket on in the firewall, this plug comes with that kit, that clutch cable kit, and this plugs up the hole in the firewall where that mechanical linkage was coming through on the other, if you had that Z-bar set up. I also want to point out, if you did have a manual transmission already and you, were, you had that spring that was attached to the top of the clutch pedal up here, you don't need that spring anymore. You can take that out. I don't know if you leave it in, if it's going to hurt anything, but I do know that with this new cable clip setup, you don't need to have that spring on the end of the clutch pedal here. And right, now that we got that bracket bolted up, I did want to point out, see how it's ground down right here? That's because the stock pad here for the clutch, you know, when this thing comes forward and engages, this bracket was hitting the edge of that and keeping it from, from bottoming out here. And if, I don't know if you can see up in the top up there, there's, there's some scrape marks on the underside of the sheet metal up here because when you have this bracket up all the way so that this clears here, it was rubbing on the top up there. So I had to drop this bracket a little bit. Well, by dropping that bracket so it doesn't rub up there, it was catching right here. So I had to ground that edge a little bit. Anyways, all right, so this is in place, ready to go. All right, from here, we just need to put the push rod in the master cylinder and hook it back up here on the brake pedal and put the brake switch in, and then we'll be done inside the car. With that new clutch kit, you get a new pilot bearing and this bushing that goes inside the end of the crank here. Because I had that flux plate from the automatic transmission, I don't have this, you know, I didn't already have this, so I'm glad that that kit comes with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in here, we're just gonna drive it in, and I'm gonna use a 27 millimeter socket so that I don't hit the bearing itself. I just drive the edges of the, of the of the bushing. All right, that's good to go. Now we can go ahead and put the flywheel on. <laughs> Future Andy here. I didn't realize that I had missed that block plate before I put the flywheel on, so that's okay. I caught it right when I was putting on the bell housing, so you'll see it later in the video. <laughs> this is probably a good time to point out that this flywheel only goes on one way. And you'll notice that the bolt holes are not exactly perfect and there's only one way they go on. So you want to find that spot where they go and then you can start putting the bolts in. And it's also good to point out that with these ARP bolts, you come with this uh, fastener assembly 
lubrication stuff, you need to put that on the bottom edge underneath the cap, the cap of the bolt. You put this on there, and then we're going to put some Loctite on the threads of the bolt so that we don't have any oil come through because the end of the crank here goes right into the oil pan, and we don't want any oil coming off here. And if you don't do that, you could get an oil leak, which would look like a rear main seal leak because it's coming through the bolts. Now I'm going to thread in just a couple of so 5 16 bolts. And the reason why I'm going to do that is it's going to give me a way to put a, a uh, breaker bar on here or whatever so I can get and torque these bolts down. And there's nothing fancy about these. They're just studs that I was using. I think I used these when I was doing the intake manifold. So now that we've got a place that we can put a leverage bar so that we can... There we go. When we go to torque this down, I got something that I can fight against. And we're going to do 80 foot-pounds on each one of these things. All right, that's all of them. Let's uh, just do one more time just to make sure we got everything good. Fantastic. Just take these studs out because we don't want these in here anymore. Alright, now it's time to put the clutch and pressure plate on. Next you want to do the clutch. And I love that MDL puts this sticker on here because uh, that lets you know which way this goes. I'm sure a lot of you guys could figure that out, but if you didn't know, it only goes on one way. The clutch kit comes with this plastic alignment tool, and these things work, they do their job. However, because I had that previous T5 transmission with the wrong input shaft, what I did is I just cut the end of that off, and I basically made an alignment tool for myself out of that piece. And the nice thing is, is I, I know that this is exactly what needs to be in here. I'm sure that plastic piece will work, but this thing does a pretty good job too. And as you go ahead and put this in place, you do need to, <laughs> this is pretty heavy, so if you've got an extra set of hands, that's always awesome, but if not, it can be done with, with one set of hands. And these only need a 25 foot pound torque to them, so you can pretty much, oh yeah, there we go, that's already clicking. Just hold this thing in place yourself and, and do it. All right, that's torqued down, 25 foot pounds, good to go. Now you can pull this out, because we don't need this in there anymore. Before we put this clutch lever in the bell housing, you need to make sure you get some grease on this ball joint here on this end. And then we need to put, there's a certain way that this throw out bearing goes. See this kind of, there's this point on here. That needs to be pointing towards this ball. And so when we put it in here, you can see how it's still pointing towards that ball point. And then you want to get this lip above those tabs. Okay. And then we want to put some grease right here on those two points. I'm just using some of this, some of this uh, bearing grease that I use for my brakes. Okay, again, remember the point pointing towards that ball. Okay, there we go. That's good. And then we need to put a little bit of grease on the inside of this sleeve here. Now we can put this in the bell housing. And just like the, the tabs there for that bearing, we need to have the tabs on the top side of that pivot joint in the inside here. And you just put it in through this end. Okay, let's put this in the car. Yeah, I forgot to put the block off plate, but now I got it on there and I had to redo everything, but that's okay, we got it figured out. So when we go ahead and put this up here, there are pins on the side of the block that will help align this. There we go, just like that. 
And then we're gonna reuse the bolts that we had on the automatic transmission bell housing. We're just gonna reuse those to hold this on here. Actually, no, we're not because these bolts are not long enough. I don't know if that's specific to the automatic transmission or if a previous person replaced these bolts and didn't put the long, but we need about, oh, it needs to be about another half inch to an inch longer. So I gotta get some new bolts. Now we got some longer bolts. All right, and then we'll put the, the bolts at the top when we drop the car back down on the ground. So now from here, we can go ahead and put the transmission into the bell housing. Go ahead and get these bolts out of the way first. This is probably the hardest part of this whole uh, swap is getting the transmission into the, to the bell housing there and getting all lined up. What I've got is the, I've got a jack underneath the oil pan to tilt the motor back a little bit to put it at an angle. And then this, this uh, transmission lift I have, it can do a little bit of an angle, but not much. So we're gonna raise it up and hopefully can get it guided in there. We have to be careful because the shifter assembly has to fit inside that hole. So we can't go straight up and in, we have to kind of go in at an angle so this can fit up inside the, the tunnel there. All right, so we got that thing all bolted up and I repositioned this uh, transmission jack to make it so that's not in the way of this transmission mount. Cause from here we need to continue to drive this up. And so we can put this cross member in there. However, up here, this shifter assembly is hitting the trim ring here in the, the, the tunnel. So let's go inside the car and take a look at that. All right, you can see here how the front lip of that is hitting the, the sheet metal and we're almost clear on this side. We'll probably be okay when we put that transmission mount in, but I'm gonna have to trim that a little bit. So let's get the saws all out and cut that out. All right, there we go. We might need to cut the carpet a little bit, but that's okay. So we got that notched out, so this fits inside. It's a little close to this edge here, but when we put that cross member in, it's gonna move the transmission over just a little bit, so we're gonna be okay. All right, now let's go down and put that cross member in. We're putting on this cross member piece down below here. We're going to need to move this the new transmission that way just a little bit for it to, to line up if you just push on it it'll line up with the holes over there so what i'm going to do is probably the best way is to take this jack down and put a regular floor jack underneath here so that i can move it a little bit easier all right before we put the bolts in to hold the cross member to the car let's just go ahead and bolt it to the trans mount real quick and we can put the bolts through to the frame here. Now we can go ahead and tighten the rest of this down and then we'll tighten the bolts on the cross member. I should point out here that I put a little bit of the of the automatic transmission fluid on the shaft of this just so when you put it in here you don't put it on that dry seal. Now we need to change the speedometer gear that was in the automatic transmission. All you gotta do is just pop this little clip off of the old gear, save the clip, and put on the new gear. And the nice thing about this is there's a square drive inside here, this is a little square piece, so that just, it only goes in there, you know, one way, once you get in there it'll fall down. Then we just put the clip back on 
Boom, done like that. Now we're gonna put it up inside the transmission. And secure it with this little fastener here on the side. And the nice thing is, is if we change the gear ratio in the rear, which we're gonna do um, eventually, we can just pull this back out and put a different gear in there. All right, that's in there. Now, when we hook up the reverse lights, it doesn't matter which way this plug goes on the side here. It just pushes on. But we need to connect these wires to the wiring of the reverse light. Now, my, white, my reverse lights are not hooked up. The wire needs to be fixed in the car. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip tie this to the side for now and come back to this and fix this later when I gotta chase down that wiring and find out why the lights don't work. All right, now we got the clutch cable routed and it is much better this time around. The headers that I had before my last car came down right through here and the cable was resting on it and it was pinched and it was just horrible. And so putting this clip on here that helps retain this inside the bell housing was a nightmare. There we go. Okay, now the first nut we're gonna wanna put on is this one with the rounded edge on it. Cause again, that sits down inside the cup here. And then the jam nut goes on after that. We want this tight enough so that this is, this is engaged on, you know, the clutch is engaged here, but not to the point where we're tightening it so much that it's starting to depress the clutch pressure plate and actually actuating it. So just good and tight here. And then what we can do is we can test it as we drive around and kind of get a feel and see where the engagement is and if we need to adjust this or not. All right, now we can go ahead and put the starter in. Don't want to forget to get these bolts on the bottom of the bell housing for the block plate. Well guys, we ran into a little bit of a problem. When I was bolting up the this exhaust system here, my H-pipe was hitting the bracket for the parking brake. Now my car doesn't have a parking brake right now, but I want to fix that eventually. So I, <laughs> I cut the bracket off, figured I could just deal with that at a different time. But now I'm noticing that it's hitting the bar over there. So I needed a whole new bracket. So I'm gonna have to get one of those ordered so that I can finish bolt, because the exhaust won't even finish bolting up because it needs to go higher than what that bracket will allow. So if you guys are doing this T5 transmission and you have this JBA H-pipe set up, you cannot use this style of, of cross member bracket. You're gonna have to get a different one. All right guys, so we went ahead and got the, I'm hoping the right cross member ordered. Uh, this is a modern driveline cross member, a very stout unit, very robust. I like it, well built. Um, but you notice the way that the shape is, this should allow the exhaust to pass right through this area. And then it places the power or the uh, parking brake bracket higher than it did on this old mount, probably where it needs to be. So that uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to keep this. And uh, when I do get a parking brake, I can utilize this setup and, and finish that out. So I'm gonna get the exhaust out of the way, then put a jack underneath the transmission so I can hold it in place and then get this one swapped out. Uh, get this new one in there and then uh, cross my fingers that everything works from there. Alright, that bracket fits much better. Uh, the exhaust <laughs> it, I had to chip, I had to grind away just a little bit edge of this parking brake bracket, but the bracket itself is still strong and it's still in place and it'll allow me to utilize that if I, when I get a chance to put the parking brake uh, in the car. So, and everything else is bolted up, the exhaust now clears the brackets, there's nothing touching there, and then this, these, uh, these V-band joints are coupled up and ready to go. So from here, we can put the uh, transmission fluid in. All right, there's two plugs on the side of the transmission. There's an upper plug and a lower one. The lower one is the drain plug. Obviously, we want to make sure that's tight. Take the top plug out, and there's 
I've got a pump to pump the, the fluid out of the container into the side of the transmission. I, I've also seen that you can do it through the shifting assembly up in the top if you've you can go in inside the car and you can pour it through the shifting assembly and it'll, it'll fill up the transmission, but you still want to leave this port open so you can see when it's full. However, you still have to seal that, that shifter assembly, so that's not easy to do when the, with it in the car like that. So whatever works for you guys, I'm just going to pump it through here. The downside is, is this thing is kind of a messy way of doing it and um, I got gloves on because I know I'm going to get oil everywhere. And we're going to just fill it in. There's going to be about two and a half, two and three quarters or so uh, quarts. And once it starts, you know, just dripping out of the, the, the fill hole here, then we know we're done and we can put the cap back in. We're just going to use this uh, Mobile One synthetic ATF fluid. Whew, that thing empties pretty fast. All right, that's two. And the third one here, you just got to just kind of go slowly and just pay attention for when it starts to drip out of the top. We can just use a 3H uh, socket to, or a 3H socket wrench to tighten this cap. Now I want to put the shifting boot and trimming on here to get this all dialed in, but the <laughs> the carpet that has been cut out by too much. Um, normally it's not cut out this much, and when it, but it had that old console in here, so it didn't matter. But now that I'm not going to have that console, I really wish they wouldn't have cut that. So and when you put this on here, when you put the rubber boot on, you know it it kind of you know it doesn't it just barely catches to the edge. I mean you could bump the carpet in and it expose it. So. Really would be great is if I had another piece of, I don't know, some foam or some rubber or just, just to outline this another half inch or an inch around this, that'd be great. That would cover up this hole, but I don't have that. So for now, we're just going to just do our best to just kind of tuck the carpet in and drill the holes and then mount this in place. All right, now that we got that drilled, let's go ahead and assemble the shifter lever. There's a couple pieces that we need here. We need this little rubber uh, isolator piece that's going to go here in between the shifter and the shift mechanism. And then we've got two fasteners. All right, it's already looking good. And then we can slide this over it. And it's going to stretch because we don't want it to be over, you know, the bolts and stuff. We want that to be hidden by the boot. And then we have a trim ring. We peel off the protective layer. And then this is going to go on here. Now comes the hard part. You got to find those screw holes that we made with the screws. You know what? We're going to fight that another day because I'm having a hard time finding that hole that I drilled through the carpet, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. I can get back to that. We wanna put this set nut on the bottom of the threads here, and then we'll thread the ball on and drive that nut up there to, to, to lock it in place. There. Oh, that looks so good. Oh man, we are ready. We are ready. Oh, I almost forgot one more bonus addition. I am gonna put one of these in here again. And uh, I had one of these in my last, in fact, the last two cars I've had one of these in. I like having an armrest, a place to hold my soda. This is definitely the way I need to go. There's Velcro underneath here, so it'll stay in place. It's not super secure, but you can always add some of that, those straps and, and screw it down if you want to. I may have to do that because I don't know if I like all the, the rockiness, but it doesn't move anywhere because it's Velcro down. And then, of course, you got a cubby hole in there. All right. There. Now we're good to go.
And the last two things that we need to put up here are those two bolts at the top of the bell housing. Those are the shorter of, a, of the six bolts. And then I also replaced, um, I put a plug in right here because I had this whole vacuum manifold thing for the automatic transmission. I don't know what those were for. I wasn't using those, but transmission was hooked up to that. But I, since I don't need any of this anymore, I just went ahead and put a plug in there and now we're good to go. All right, guys, let's go for a quick drive. working so far. <laughs> there is uh, still dirt on the road from the winter and the sticky tires that I have are picking up every little tiny rock and throwing it all over inside the wheel wells. <laughs> it sounds like I'm sandblasting the inside of my wheel wells on this car. <laughs> The first thing that I'm noticing is the incredibly tall rear end that I have on this car. So I've got the 280 gears in the rear and I could probably go 45 miles an hour in first gear, maybe 50. It's so tall, um, but that's okay. We're gonna fix that down the road. Everything shifts great. This is fantastic. Everything runs good, clutch feels good. Fifth gear. Okay, so let's get see here, about 60 miles an hour. We're 1750 RPMs, 1700 maybe, I don't know, maybe 18. So um, awesome, because I live out of town, I need that, that overdrive to help uh, with, the, with the gas mileage really. So um, that's gonna be nice to have that fifth gear, you know, that overdrive. Um, and then as I fix that rear end, I, as I put in a uh, little bit uh, shorter gears uh, in the back there, that will bring the RPM up, but that's okay because uh, I'll still be sitting around 2,000 RPM or something like that at 60 miles an hour, which is fantastic. So much, much better than what I had before. I had that C4 in here and that third gear is a one-to-one. -one, so, you know, if we were to put it in fourth gear right now, which is a one-to-one, -one, that puts me at about... Yeah, about 28, 2900, no, sorry, 2400 RPMs at 60 miles an hour. So this will just be a little bit nicer for when you're going into town or whatever, so. Take it through the twisties a little bit. Have a little fun with the car. Is so much more fun to drive with this managed transmission. <clears throat> that automatic, you just hold on to the steering wheel, but now you get a little more control over the gearing. Ah, this is just so much more fun. Man, I'm glad I did this swap.
Guys, that's it. That is a T5 swap uh, in a classic Mustang. Um, particularly if you're wanting to swap your C4 automatic out into a T5, this is the end of that second part video uh, where we the first video again we did the, the removal of the automatic transmission. So I wanted to point out uh, on this, uh, I did want to go ahead and fix the boot. I had to have some help with that. I had to have somebody else hold the, the boot down as I drilled the hole and then put the screw in. It was kind of a ridiculous nightmare but anyways so got that done um, really that was the only thing that kind of we, like we saw was that cross member that I had to get a different one because of the exhaust and you guys may not have that problem depending on how your exhaust is routed in your car um, and then really you saw everything else how it just kind of fell together and went in place and was pretty easy the total um, dollars you know the, the, the total amount that I spent I'm about 2,500 bucks into this um, that's gonna be different for you guys depending on what you pay for your T5. Um, and then if you have to do any work, like I, my last car, I took the, the T5 in and I had a shop do all the, the bearings and all the service at all. This time I did that myself, replaced that counter shaft. That counter shaft was 125 bucks, the one that was missing the teeth. So there's that gets added to the cost and everything. Um, but nothing that, uh, that nobody can handle. That was pretty easy to do. Um, got all the tools. Um, the only thing I didn't have was a press to press the bearings off and on. So I went and picked up one of those. So I think, We'll call it a wash for all the money that I spent um, doing the work to get the, the transmission serviced. I would have paid that to have somebody done to do it, but nice, now I have the tools, so that's always nice. Except for you know those parts, you know the bearing kit, there the, the the seal kit and everything for the transmission, and then that counter shaft. I would have had to buy that anyway. So, um, and then again, the, the option you could have done uh, the hydraulic clutch um, I had done on my last car. Uh, the nice thing is, is it's kind of a retro kit. You can mount it to the side of the bell housing, and in, in my last. Car, I, you know, video I did last year. You can see how that's done. If you guys don't like the cable option, you can do the hydraulic, and you don't have to have that puck style that goes on the uh, input shaft of the transmission and, and actuates the clutch that way. Some people like that, some people don't, because if you ever have to service it, you have to pull the transmission off versus that slave cylinder mounted to the side of the the bell housing. If you do the hydraulic option, you could do that. So, um, other than that, guys, we saw shifting is smooth. Uh, everything works. All the gears work. Um, I'm happy with it, guys. This is fantastic. You know, I got some other things I want to do. Like I said, I want to do that rear end, uh, get that, the, the traction lock uh, differential put in there with probably, probably go 355 gears, uh, which is what I did in the last car, but I really like that gear set. It's a nice balance of some pep down low as you're shifting through the gears, but not, you know, so short that your highway speeds are, are negated by that overdrive gear. So I think that 355 would be perfect for this. And then, um, yeah, just continue to upgrade the car and have fun with it. I really, shifting those gears, rolling through those gears is, is a lot of fun and I really enjoy that part. Uh, and I'm glad I did that. So, all right guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.